Hi, it's Catherine from Taking Tea with Catherine, and we're going to talk about New York today. This tea is not really related to New York except for the fact that I bought it in New York in Ten Ren, which is a lovely tea shop in Chi Chinatown, Manhattan, and it's called Tropical Fash Passion. Fashion. Mixed fruit tea. It's really good and refreshing for a nice summer night. I can imagine it'd be amazing iced. So, um, I got the idea for talking about New York. Well, one reason is because I'm a New Yorker, and I know I talk a lot about London, but, um, I am from New York. I do read a lot about New York. I, I enjoy the city. I'm not stereotypical in every way, except for the fact that I'm a big walker. Uh, so, I read this book called Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk by Kathleen Rooney, and it just appealed to the walker in me. Not everyone that I read, whose reviews I read of this book, really got that deal. But that's okay, because not every book is for everyone. But um, this is a book based on, lightly based on, the life of a poet slash advertising writer at Macy's back in the 30s and onward. And um, written by um, the, the woman who wrote this, Kathleen Rooney, is also a poet. Um, she's written poetry. And um, so that sort of influences the feel of the book, which is good. Um, one of the things I liked about it was just the feeling of walking in New York. It's, you have to do it to, to get it. Any city really has its own flavor, but Manhattan especially. I guess Brooklyn and Queens have it too, of the Bronx, but, but Manhattan is such a walkable city. It's, a, it's built on, mostly on a grid system, um, so in, in parts of it it's not easy to get lost, and then parts you can sort of go off a little bit. But, um, so this is the story of an older woman in, you know, in the mid-80s, um, in her mid-80s as well, who decides on New Year's Eve to walk from Murray Hill all the way down, which is in Midtown in the 30s, by the way, all the way down to downtown Manhattan and back again. And it's just, part of it is her musings as she walks and the people she encounters, the restaurants she goes to, the parties she goes to, shops that she visits. And also, it's her reminiscences about the past. And although I don't always like things where people, you know, the back and forth to different time periods and your TARDIS gets all dizzy. But there was something very quintessential New York about the story, about the, the department store Macy's, which is in, also in Midtown near the Empire State Building, which was new at the time of the story. And um, I just, I don't know, I loved it. I love the flavor of New York of the 80s as well which is a part, I don't know it as well because I was a child in the 80s, so I didn't really take long walks in Manhattan back then. But it was right around the time where they had the subway vigilante, which um, was a big scary thing if you um, lived in the 80s at the time, like this guy was gonna shoot you in the subway. But um, yeah, it was, it was an interesting story. This is before they found out who he was. And um, yeah, I would recommend it. If you like books about rambling, walking around, I most certainly recommend it. So it made me think of other books that I like that I have about New York. And um, this is a book that sort of reminded me of it, but not really. I mean, there are certain themes that are the same, but um, this is an angsty book, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I read it a while back when I was reading a lot of depressing books. And um, it's basically the story, um, also semi-autobiographical, about a girl um, who has an internship at a magazine in the 50s in Manhattan. And just her little experiences there and some of the terrible things that happened to her state of mind afterwards. But that little, that bit when she's in New York is also a very of the time period of the 50s. Um, interesting time to be a woman. So if you're in the mood for a little bit of depressing story, go for it. Um, and also if you like to read about New York. All right, so let's get to something a little less depressing. And, um, and to me, this is one of the most cheerful things about New York. When you need to get out of the feeling of the city, when it's a little stressful, and hopefully during the day, but you know, if not, you go to Central Park. Or a lot, a lot of different parks, but Central Park is right in the middle of Manhattan, and there is an element of nature. Yeah, there's people, there's a lot of places to go that are inside. There's like a beautiful castle that you can go and see all the views. And you still see buildings, you still hear street sounds when you're in Central Park, but there is something about it that is, a, it's an escape, and we all need an escape. And it's a gorgeous, it's, it, now it's been revamped by the um, Central Park Conservancy, I think it is. 
just cleaned up since the days when it was disgusting and dirty. And it is a beautiful, beautiful place. And um, this book is called Central Park in the Dark by Marie Wynn. I actually managed to get one that was autographed, which I know I did not get her autograph, so I must have got it used and someone must have given it up. Why? But anyway, more mysteries of urban wildlife. Now, I have seen a number of wild things in Central Park beyond people. <laughs> um, raccoons, I've seen hawks, which are mentioned in this book. Um, but I haven't seen owls, and so there's a lot of stories, and you can tell in the picture, owl, looks like my cat. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of stories about a group of people who meet up at night together in all kinds of weather to see the wildlife that doesn't come out until at night. And if you like bird watching, and if you like reading about New York, and if you like Central Park, this book is for you. Definitely give it a shot. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a nice story. Nice, like, memoir -y. you know. Read it. So, <laughs> speaking of Central Park, this is just a, um, you know, a nice coffee table book, or tea table if you're me. Uh, the Ramble in Central Park, which is something that I do very much. I ramble, <laughs> both walking and in speech. It's just a picture book. I mean, photograph book, but it's gorgeous. Look at this. Shows autumn and winter. You know, Central Park, even though there are times where it's a bit cold or a bit hot, it's always walkable. It's a beautiful place. I've been there when it was snowing and it was gorgeous. So, but the Ramble is a little part of, of Central Park that is sort of in the middle and you can get lost in. Maybe you'll, you'll get out of it eventually. It's not like you can be lost forever, but you think I'm going a straight line from east to west and that's where I'm going. Suddenly you're ooh, north and south, up and down. I don't know where I am. Oh, there's a raccoon and whatever. Obviously it's designed to feel wilder than it is because it's still in the city. But it feels great. It feels it feels the quiet of it. I mean, it's one of the few parts of Central Park that you really feel separate. Even when you see people going by, there's just this feeling of peace. Obviously, be safe like anywhere else. But beautiful, beautiful book if you like to read art, you know, photograph books and picture books. And um, so that's Central Park for us. Although I'm going to talk about Central Park briefly again. Um, now here's one of my favorite books, and it also covers London, so it's like the best of my worlds. And um, and it's a book about books. Hello. And it's called 84 Charing Cross Road by Helene Hanf. Uh, I've actually been seeing this on BookTube a lot lately, suddenly. And I have no problem with that. I love it. Um, this is about a woman in, starting in the late 40s and on till the late 60s, who is a script reader, writer, and you know, works a lot for the Broadway scene, which is slowly moving to Hollywood. So she's eking out a living in what she's doing, um, Helene Hanf, and she lives in the Upper East Side, which nowadays no one who's struggling could live there, but that's what makes it interesting. Um, so she gets, in the middle of her researches and everything, she gets into a certain lecturer slash writer from, I think, Oxford, who recommends all kinds of English literature, mostly nonfiction essays, etc. But she wants to get a hold of it. And alas, there's no Amazon. <laughs> there's no online ways of getting books. And even though there's tons of bookshops, even then there were tons of bookshops in New York, she couldn't find any of the books she was looking for. At least not, you know, for a million dollar kind of very fancy bound books. So she finds an ad for a bookshop in London that sells use books, all kinds of books, and she gives it a shot. She writes a letter and they send her these beautifully bound but affordable books. And there's this one man that takes charge of sending her these books. So she starts a correspondence with him asking for all different kinds of, oh, you, and you just, you learn about all different kinds of writers, English writers, and when she doesn't quite get what she wants or she wants to complain about it, she will go on and on about it and it's hilarious. She's cranky and he's kind of straight laced, but you can tell he's got a sense of humor too. It's a little bit of that dry British humor that comes through. But, you know, just because she lives in New York, so there are the, the flavor of living in New York does come through because she's basically living there the whole time in this story. And um, speaking of Helene Hanf, she also has a book called Apple of My Eye, you know, as in Big Apple. So she writes a lot of, um, a lot of different 
stories about like real stories about living in New York and her little adventures. I don't know if it's this book or another one, but she does mention um, her annoyance at Central Park being encroached by the growth of the Metropolitan Museum of Art or the Met Museum or the museum, as I call it. I said it to some people in France. They were like looking for the Metropolitan Museum of Art and, and when they were in Central Park and I was like, oh, the museum, which I didn't mean of the world. But when I think of the museum, I think of Central Park. I mean, of yeah, I was in Central Park. I think of the Met Museum and they just had a look on their face like, eh. And they're right. I was being a snob. And the museum could also be the natural history, you know, like the movie. I'm rambling again. Um, but she has such a love for Central Park and parts of New York. Actually, I haven't read this in a while. I'd love to go over it again. It's just, it's just, it's just fantastic. She talks about downtown, uptown, everywhere, you know, in a time period, bef mostly before my time. Uh, she died in the late 90s. Um, her apartment at the time was down the block from where I was working, but I didn't know any of this. But they renamed it Charing Cross House in her honor. So, which is cool because now in London where the bookshop was, was, it's now just got a plaque and I think it's fast food or whatever it is, but it's not, not the same. Anyway, she has other books, but these are some of the good ones um, for, for New York lovers and for London lovers, but for New York, most certainly read these. These are not long reads, but they're quite enjoyable. Her crankiness is wonderful. I just love crankiness. Okay, now we're going to get into two biographies that I love and would love to read again. First, I'm going to go for The Wrist Breaker. And, you know, some, some people, they may not be born in New York, but they make their name in New York. The immigrant experience, as it were. I'm not an immigrant. My parents were not immigrants. Most of my grandparents were not. But everybody who lives in New York or in, in the United States, most, ha most of them have come from immigrants. So that story is a, is a fascinating one, but it's also a very New York one, you know. The um, Ellis Island story, the Statue of Liberty, etc. But here's one of the most famous immigrants of all time, especially more recently if you've watched any Broadway shows lately or wanted to get tickets and didn't. But, la 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 la, I'm not going to sing. I'm doing you a favor here. So Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. Um, obviously, um, Alexander Hamilton was born in the Caribbean and emigrated to New York um, via, I think, New Jersey in, in his, I think, late teens. Uh, he lied about his age, so we don't really know. But, um, and he went to college, but then, you know, he got involved in the American Revolution and he worked for George Washington, which is a big deal. And then he became the Secretary of the Treasury and basically designed um, the financial system of the United States, but it's still mostly based in New York. He lives most of the time in parts of downtown New York, which most of early early, especially Manhattan, early New York um, dwellers were downtown, in a very small part of downtown, not even the, what we call downtown nowadays, just a little tiny sp sp space. It's weird to think how small it was, you know, and if you wanted to move out to the country, you'd go uptown. So eventually he did end up getting a, um, a place in Harlem, which I haven't been to yet. I think they moved it, the actual building bodily, but it's still in Harlem. And I, you know, I spent enough time in Harlem, so I should go to see it. But it's in a part of Harlem I haven't been to much recently. I'm also rambling again, but um, there's parts in Philadelphia as well because they moved headquarters to Philadelphia for a while and all kinds of shenanigans happen but I don't know there's something about the events that happen in New York that make it the most interesting there's a part where he's talking I think he gets pelted with rocks I mean all kinds of things he doesn't get killed in New York he gets killed in New Jersey but he dies in New York great story if you can handle a big chunky chunky chunker book like this go for it very well written and also if you've seen the play or, or, or if you know the story of the play you like the inside story a little bit now Let's talk about another biography of one of my favorite people. Um, well, maybe not people, but one of my favorite poets. But her life story is quite interesting. A little sad, like everybody. Else. If you're a poet, hello. You have to be a little bit sad. <laughs> and this is Edna St. Vincent Millay. Um, also one of my favorite biographies. I haven't read it since, I think, 2002. So I'm dying for a reread. Her middle name is after the hospital that used to be in the West Village, um, which has closed, sadly. And um, one of her relatives had been patched up there or sick there or treated there or whatnot. 
And around the time she was born, so they decided to pay tribute to the hospital by naming her middle name after St. Vincent's Hospital, not the actual saint itself. Um, Lillian Boxfish Takes a Walk actually mentioned um, her and the St. Vincent's Hospital because she spends a little time there too in the, in the course of the story. Now, not the whole story isn't based in New York, but there's a bit in Greenwich Village, which was a lot more bohemian in the past, like in the 20s time period. So um, if you like that sort of thing, which I do, it's kind of sad to go to Greenwich Village now sometimes because it's a little more commercialized, a little more chain stores, but you can still get some of the flavor. By the way, you're not a New Yorker until you've complained about how it used to be. A little bit of nostalgia. This is a really good read. If you like reading biographies and if you like poetry, or even if you just like reading biographies, go for this one. They talk about her voice a lot, by the way, and, um, and how beautiful it was, and I'm like, oh, my voice certainly isn't. But when I, I heard a recording of it, and she had this little voice that sounded a little bit like the, you know, Glenda from uh, the Wizard of Oz. I was like, I guess that's how they talk in those days. Anyway, I'm going to move on briefly. Um, there's so many books to talk about. I haven't read this in a while, so I'm not going to talk too long about The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, who wrote quite a few books about New York and other places. This is all Gilded Agey, rich, rich, rich people getting into rich people problems, very uh, the gossip girl of its time, I guess. Um, someone who gets married but f is falling in love with someone from who's coming into New York, who, who's so different, and all the problems that come from that. So if you like reading about rich people and their problems, it's actually very well written. Very descriptive and sumptuous in his description. So if you like that, which a lot of people do, sometimes I do, yes, read The Age of Innocence. And it's not that long, people. If, you, if, you're, if you're tired from Alexander Hamilton, then there you go. Now, I would be remiss if I did not talk a little bit about my favorite subject, which is tea. And I know New York is not the teaest city in the world, but it's gotten a little more. And um, this is just a little sad for me, but I just, I found this book. It's not the only book I have about a tea shop in New York, but it's one that is long gone. And it's called Teeny. And it was run by Moby and what's her name? Kelly Tisdale. And when they were running it, I'm not really into his music very much, but when they were running it, it was a cool place. It was um, a vegetarian tea room. Actually quite affordable in the Lower East Side, which um, was rapidly gentrifying at the time. But... You know, kind of hipstery, but in a way that didn't annoy me. The food was really good. They had a thing called Teeny Chino, which was a, like a frothy herbal tea mix, which I, I want to look to see if the recipe's in here, because I, oh, I loved it. I haven't been able to quite duplicate it. And it was great. And one day, I don't know, it came with a new management. There was a fire, I don't know. And one day I, I went there and it wasn't as good. And then I went there another time and it was disastrous. The service was terrible. The food was a joke. And I hated it. I said I would never go back, but then they changed management again. I gave it one more try. It was better, but still not great. And then they closed. And now I think they might still have a bottled iced tea company, but it's not the same. So it's kind of nice to have this. And also it was good to have recipes, especially if you're a vegetarian, but even if you're not. I'm not, I would like to be. I have some issues with soy. I don't dislike it, but it doesn't like me very much. So anyway. Um, and then I want to show you these two books that are kind of irrelevant because a lot of the places aren't here anymore, but I just, I don't know. These two books, the New York Book of Tea and Tea in the City, New York. I also have a London version of this, so I might show it in one of my London book episodes. And, um, just lists of different tea places, different places to find tea. And some of them, like Tenra and I, are still around. Myers of Keswick, which is a British, um, grocery store, still around. But then if Teeny's in there, well... Rest in peace. You know what I mean? You can't... That's the thing about New York is that it's constantly changing. I'm getting sad. But anyway, um, I have to say, yes, New York isn't the teaest place in the world. It actually... I don't know if you call it coffee capital, but it is much more known for its coffee. I mean, people say, oh, that's how you know in New York about how they say coffee. I don't say it like coffee, but I do don't... I don't say coffee. So I guess it's my little shibboleth. I'm, I'm a semi-New Yorker in my accent. <laughs> I don't know. Your mileage may vary. So those are some of the New York books that I 
either recommend or recently enjoyed. I mean, I, I recommend all of them. I, I, I like them all to some extent. Um, they're not definitive. This is not the, you know, the be all and end all list of these are the vital New York novels, nonfiction books. Cause, and I have some other books that I haven't even shown you yet, so I could save it for another time. But um, you know what? I mean, why be repetitive? There's plenty of other people who did the definitive rankings of New York books, etc. So, you know, sometimes I got to do my own thing. And that's what makes me a true New Yorker. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know what I'm talking about. Oh, it's late. <laughs> and, um, okay. So I'm going to show you something. Just It's slightly off topic, but slightly on topic. But um, this is a little periodical that comes out for free. And it is called Borough Magazine, as in the Borough of Queens. And it's mostly, uh, yeah, because this one's a story of Long Island City, Sunnyside, which is mostly Western Queens, which is where I live. I live in Astoria. And, um, I know you probably don't know what I'm talking about. It's got tomatoes in the front. Ew, I don't like tomatoes, but <laughs> sorry, I'm rambling again. Um, the reason I'm showing it is because it's an interesting little, like I said, it's free and it smells really good. And it talks about different shops and restaurants, you know, that are opening or recommended in New York. And, um, but every year, I think it's every year, they have, um, a little article of people, um, submit their pictures on Instagram of summer reading. So what their version of summer reading in New York is. And a couple of years ago I did that and I had a picture of my cat Zenobia peeking out between a few of my books and tea cause you know, on theme. And um, <laughs> Hamilton was in it at the time I was reading it. Look, I have read this book. Um, so this year I sent another one with um, my other cat, Freddie. Freddie Percury, by the way, is his name. Cause you know, you know. And um, surrounded by, um, three of my books, two of which are, are my current TBR, which I'm reading. Um, one of which I returned to the library, but oh well. And, um, they put it in there. Look at this. There's my Freddy with my books sitting basically where I'm sitting right now. <laughs> Isn't he cute? I'm sorry. I'm going on on about cats now, but anyway, so I just, I had to show that to you. So I'm rambling and that's what we do in New York. Ramble on. This has been Taking Tea with Catherine. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please comment on any books that you like that have to do with New York. And please subscribe if you like what you've seen. And have a lovely night. Bye.